From here, giraffes have a view of Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. But the men and women who run on the surrounding roads are setting their sights even further. They're contemplating Rio and the Olympics. Their dream is to participate in the games. That's why they train for two hours a day. They're not from Nairobi. In fact, they're from far away. Their souls have already been worn on the roads of Exodus. Congo, Sudan, Somalia. They're refugees who fled war. This year, the International Olympic Committee decided to create a team for athletes who can no longer compete for their national squads. 43 such athletes have been selected around the globe. This small group is among them. For the past year, they've been training in this centre belonging to the Kenyan foundation Tegla Larupe, sponsored by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees and the IOC. But not everyone will go to Rio. The refugee team will only be composed of 10 athletes. We still don't know who or how many here will take part in the Olympics. The announcement will be made in a few days. Gaston Kisa Zamumu hopes to compete in the 1500 meters. I'm very, very happy because this is challenge for, for me. Challenge for all refugees, for all world. Gaston was 14 when he left the Democratic Republic of Congo. He traveled more than 2,000 kilometers on foot and crossed three borders to reach a refugee camp in Kenya. I left Congo when my parents were killed. I walked for two weeks to reach Burundi. It was very hard. I had nothing to eat, nothing to drink. When I came across a house on the way, I asked if I could stay there for one night. And the day after, I set out once more on my way. Gaston is in peak physical condition, but his head is full of painful memories, like everyone here. Like James, Angelina, Paolo or Rose, who specializes in the 800 meter race. She fled the civil war in Sudan 15 years ago. Between seven to eight years old, when I was coming from Sudan, because we came with my parents, then some years back, they went back to Sudan and left us here with some of my siblings, whom I stay now in Kakuma. As I'm here, my parents, they don't know why, why I'm here. They don't know if I'm doing what or what, they don't know, because we don't do contact with them because they are in, in the village, so they don't have contact for communication. Used to facing the world's cruelty alone, these athletes have had to learn to live and work together. Okay. Let's go, Karen. Yes. And who better than a former relay champion to create that team dynamic? John Anzra, a 61-year-old Kenyan, is both trainer and life coach. And they came from different places, from Somali, from Ethiopia, we have Congolese. And we told them, as human beings, all human beings are the same. Because when they came, they still had animosity from where they came from. We had to diffuse the tension. When the tension was gone, that's why you see what we are doing is we are doing it as a team. Every night after training, the athletes settle down to sleep. Dreaming of getting to the games in Brazil. Some of the athletes pre-selected for the Olympic refugee team are already living in Rio. For example, Yolanda Mabika, aged 28. She's from the Democratic Republic of Congo, but has been living in Brazil for three years. Separated from her parents because of war in the Kivu region, she grew up in a children's home in Kinshasa, where she learned judo. Yolanda made it all the way to the World Championships in Rio in 2013 and decided to seek asylum. This is the first time that refugees will participate in a great international competition. I'm here to do something good, so that other refugees can be happy and proud. I train very hard here to gain more and more strength and resistance. 
life has already taught Yolanda strength and resilience. The same goes for Popol Misenga, who arrived in Rio alongside her in 2013. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, whenever they lost, their former coach locked them up in a cage. If he participates in the Olympics, this time Popol will seek victory, not out of fear, but because he wants it with all his heart. I constantly think about it. I'm fully focused on the goal of the Olympics. Not so long ago, neither Popol nor Yolanda would have dared to dream of an Olympic medal. When she arrived in Brazil, Yolanda was homeless and lived in a favela or slum. Step by step, she's built a life for herself. And now she lives in a quiet neighborhood. Yolanda tries to dispel her bad memories by focusing on the future and on the Olympics. Now, when I take the bus, I smile. It's been a long time since I was like this. Before, I used to cry constantly. But now, that's all behind me. Determined to rebuild her life in Brazil, Yolanda is learning Portuguese with Popol. Twice a week at the University of Rio, she takes intensive classes. We'll start by reading the words one by one. We've already done this, no? Behind my opponents, it's my life that's at stake. It's a new life for me. I'm very invested in it and in several areas to make sure I don't miss this opportunity. Studying is also fundamental. When I'm older and I won't be able to do judo anymore, I'll have to find another way. It's at this point that the studies will be useful to me. 9,000 kilometers away, the sun rises in Kenya, a dawn which will lift the veil on the athlete's uncertainty. Today, the athletes at the Tegla Laupe Foundation will finally find out which of them will be selected for the Olympic team of refugees. The IOC is set to announce the official list in a few hours' time. Gaston from Congo really believes he's ready for the 1500 meters. Good morning. I go to train. Evening, trip to train. So, become slowly. Every day, come up, up, up. So, right now, I think it's okay. <laughs> Gaston can already picture himself at the Olympics. With his new shoes on, he's in the starting blocks. This is for a spike. Spike. Yeah, I use this for maybe even go to track, I use this. So this shoes is for real? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Gaston and some others head off for a long distance run to cope with the stress of decision day. A few hours later in Switzerland, in a large hotel in Lausanne, the president of the International Olympic Committee is getting ready to make the announcement to the international press. This is the first time that the IOC has appointed a refugee Olympic team because we are actually experiencing an unprecedented crisis in the world. With 20 million refugees and 60 million displaced people. That's why the IOC has considered it necessary to send a message of solidarity with all refugees across the world. The time has come. In Luxembourg, Belgium, Brazil, and Kenya, 43 refugee athletes are waiting. So uh, five of uh, the 10 members of this uh, refugee uh, Olympic uh, team are coming uh, from the Tegla Lorube program. The Kenyan center will provide half of the athletes of the Olympic refugee team. But which ones? Jackson, the camp manager, is to make the announcement. 
officials of the High Commissioner for Refugees are attending. <laughs> Refugees are just uh, people like you and me. They're flee except they're fleeing conflict, war, terror, violence, something that the average person never has to face. So hopefully this will give them an opportunity to tell their story, to tell the, the harsh realities of what, what they've had to endure, but also to celebrate the, the fact that they're able to compete on a world stage and really show their, their skills and their strengths to everybody. Gaston has swapped his purple jersey for a more sober T-shirt. It's a solemn moment. There are 20 athletes at the centre, so he has a one in four chance of seeing his life transformed. Like Rose, the Sudanese athlete, who's wearing her best blouse. And I wonder if I say something, I want to say thank you. I'm going to make Angelina Nadai, Rose Natiga, and Paul Amato. For you guys who have been selected. After years of suffering and perseverance, the dream has come true for three men and two women, including Rose. John, their coach, lets his joy explode, forgetting that for the others, it's a heavy blow. Gaston preferred to leave the room. He wasn't up for partying but his competitive spirit remains. I think one day, in my heart for me, one day I needed to come to my champion because it's my heart inside. Yeah, I, because I love athletes, I love sport. Rose, on the other hand, is going to pack her bags for Rio. She's coming to terms with the important message she'll take with her. Uh, being a refugee doesn't mean that you, you don't have talents or you cannot do anything as any other person who's not a refugee. So also a refugee can be firm and stand strong so that they can show their talents to the world. And this one can bring us together through interaction and it promotes peace all over the world. And also let you to be an ambassador of both IOC family and refugee. In Brazil, the two Congolese judokas have been selected too, and in training, Yolanda's story is already well known. Will you change your haircut for the competition, or will you keep it that way? No, I will change. But it looks nice like that. I'll cut my hair to change my style. Maybe change your haircut for interviews and keep this one for the competition. I am super proud. She inspires me. She is one of the people I admire. She's a great warrior and she has strength and willingness. Everyone should be inspired by her because she has the strength to excel. And she's pretty. She knows how to have fun and she's a fighter. <laughs> What he just said makes me happy, because from his words, I'm a warrior. I don't know if I'm a warrior, but I'm a fighter. Because in my country, I saw war, and to escape this, the steps to cross were numerous. Yolanda and Papal will be joined soon in Rio by Rose and her four teammates from the Tegla Lorupe. Also on the team, there'll be two Syrian swimmers and an Ethiopian marathon runner. In the absence of a flag to represent them, they'll march together under the Olympic banner, a first in Olympic history. Competing on behalf of some 60 million people, forced to flee the violence and chaos of the world.
Our report from Kenya and from Rio by our reporters Stefan Kenesh and Nicola Ransom. And of course, we'll be keeping a special eye during the Olympics on the performance of those special athletes that we highlighted. You're watching reporters here in France Van Cat. Do stay with us.